Communicate. <laughs> down here, perhaps. Communication is a basic skill most of us practice every day, often without really realising we're doing it, and rarely intentionally. My name is Donna Benjamin. I'm a project lead at Catalyst IT, and I sit on the board of the Drupal Association. But what makes me qualified to talk to all of you about communication? Um, a colleague made me realise that I'd been taking some of my skills for granted. I have a Bachelor of Arts in theatre and drama. I have another qualification in internet and web computing and I'm a qualified trainer. All of those things add up to me having studied a body of knowledge that I don't even think about now. It's kind of like once you learn to ride a bicycle, you don't think about how you learnt to ride a bicycle or the mechanical, uh, the mechanical actions you take to keep those wheels turning. I take it for granted. So my colleague was, um, was prompted to sort of ask me about this because I had such sort of, I was so kind of relaxed and comfortable about speaking in front of people. It didn't kind of fill me with dread or nerves like some of our other colleagues were sort of discussing and their challenges of how to improve their speaking skills. So this was what prompted a little bit of reflection. So that's what I sort of bring to the stage, if you like, a sense of stage craft, of connecting with you as a <coughs> great stagecraft in action. <clears throat> Okay, so, this is me, I've already gone through this. So, what I wanted to do today was to invite you into a conversation, not just stand up here and talk at you for an hour, I wanted us to kind of engage a little bit in this thing, this thing called communication. Stagecraft is just one element. This bit, me, broadcasting to you, speaking, is only one element. element. The thing you learn when you work in theatre is that you need to know yourself as much as anything else so that you are able to perhaps pretend to be someone else. And that's probably the one tip I give most people who are first standing up on stage and wondering how they're going to do it, and I say, pretend it's not you. It's not about you, it's about all of you. It's the audience. Know thy audience. This, to me, is the real key to communication. It's what's happening, it's what you're all doing right now. You're actually the important factor in communication. It's the listening that matters. We usually think when we talk about communication, about the broadcast bits, right? About the speaking, about the writing, or reading, you know, or, or um, uh, presenting, speaking, talking, whether it's broadcast um, on whatever medium, whether it's a bull billboard, it's all about the kind of broadcast part. But I want us to bring back and say, perhaps that's not the whole story. It's the listening that matters. And how do we improve our listening skills to be more effective communicators? Communication is a two-way street. I love this image. There's a lot of communication going on in this picture. Does anyone want to kind of call out some of the things they see here? Why would, this, why would I say this is communication? It's all right, you can speak. Street signs, yes. There's two street signs. What else? Yeah. Beautiful. 
beautiful. So I'm going to repeat for the recording. On the one side of the street, there's a lot of free expression. And on the other side, there's a lady hiding behind a curtain. Yes? Thank you. So there's a lot going on here. There's graffiti. Graffiti is a, a ma an amazing form of communication. It's not very, it's generally not authorised. In Melbourne, where I'm from, it's become, you know, street art and very, you know, well-loved and recognised. But it did, wasn't always so, right? So graffiti. And, and there's artwork and there's signs. And there's, and one of those signs is one way that I'm saying communication is that two-way street. So this is one of the reasons why this matters. This is pretty interesting time in history. We have up to five generations of people in our workplaces. That's extraordinary. They all have different ways of preferring how they consume and engage in communication. They may not necessarily fit the stereotypes, but it's just this vast kind of array of types and sorts and things. As many as five generations with diverse communication appetites make up today's workforce. So let's get into it. I wanted to kind of distill this big, broad, hairy topic of communication into three things. The what, the how, and the why. So let's start with the what. And I'm actually not going to spend a lot of time here. I think about the what as the actual message you're trying to communicate, the idea, the story. Whatever it is that is that message is the what. And I kind of distill it right down into what we often do with communication is transmit culture, whether it's workplace culture, big art stuff, we're often transmitting culture and all of the little bits and pieces that live within that. But that's not where I want to dwell today. I think the big bit is the how. This is where we all have room to grow. No matter how great a communicator you are, if you take the idea that you can always be better, if you can focus on developing your mastery, this is where we all have room to grow. How do we communicate? Now, if you read your abstracts carefully, you were, you were forewarned that I would ask you to engage in a little bit of communication. What I'd like you to do is turn to the person beside you or clump into threes or fours and have a chat about this question. How do you communicate? How? What does this mean? How do you communicate? I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. I want you to have a chat, throw your ideas around. Because I think we all do this every day, right? But we don't stop to think about it. Unless you're a communications professional, and I, I would suspect there are a few of you in the room today. Hands up if you consider yourself a communications professional. There's a few of you, right? So you probably do think intentionally about what communication is. So I'm going, to, I'm going to call on you to be our experts in the room. The rest of us are absolutely brilliant amateurs, okay? So huddle up, group, cluster, have a chat. How do we communicate?
Okay. I see some of you starting to wrap up your conversations. Others are still in full force. So as you sort of start to kind of bring your thoughts together, some of you who perhaps finished early came to some clear conclusions quickly, perhaps. Some of you have got into heated debates. I could tell from the noise and the energy in the room, yeah? So someone perhaps, you know, uh, call out some of, the, some of the thoughts or insights that you had. How do we communicate? Got some, some thoughts to share? Yes? Yeah. So it depends. So we just discussed that, that some of it might uh, using phone calls to communicate, but it won't last very much because you don't get the expression of the people. And the person prefers more to meet each other in face to face to discuss problems. And there's also a difference between uh, discussing with customers on problem and you want to fix the problem with customers. And the thing how you communicate to people is you tell them your problem. So there's also some, some difference. So let me see if I got this. So starting with some people use phone calls, but perhaps they like to use face-to-face. -face, and there's the difference between speaking to customers and, hello, welcome, come on in. <laughs> um, and, and some of the challenges of having different types of communication to those different audiences. Yeah, great, thank you. Some, the, some others. How do we communicate? I've thrown up some of the elements of it, and I imagine that some of you touched on on some of these. What are others? Yes. I guess from reading what there is what's happening in our company, we use the phone less and less now that we go to Google Hangout, <coughs> Skype, or because there's nothing like seeing someone's face and talking to people. Yeah. Phone. So there's a shift from having used the phone to starting to use video yeah. and have that opportunity to see people as they communicate, which adds facial expressions and more richness than you get just on the phone, yeah? Thank you. Yes? So one of the things that, um, so my company is, well, we're people virtual and remote, right? So we have people in an office and we have people all around the country. And, uh, one thing that was interest, that's interesting for us is that even if most of the people are in the office, if there is one person who's remote, we'll all be on the hangout. So we are all communicating at the same level of bandwidth. That's really interesting. So um, George is talking about his organisation where they've got a combination of people working together in the one place, present, and they've got a, no, a, num a number of others who are working um, distributed. And they're coming in, and, and if you've even just got one person distributed, it prompts everyone to use the, augment the communication with technology so that it allows everyone to participate to the same extent. Lovely, thank you. Yes. That's a lovely story, thank you. So just to sort of summarise that is um, uh, this person from Amazie Labs is building out their distributed team and they're, they're finding that that, um, that difference between the, the located team and the people who are coming in distributed over technology, the lack of the remoters being able to see body language and the non-verbal communication that we all do and take for granted when we're with each other like, I could make a whole bunch of physical slapstick that would never go on the recording, right? There's physical things that we do. We say facial expressions. 
body language, shut down, open up. These things are huge, but when we start to have this sort of blended situation, we realise how much we're missing and think about how we have to compensate. Thank you, really great insight, thank you. Yes, Sham. Thank you, Sham. So um, the, the key learning that Sham has, has found is that that in-person connection up front makes a really big difference. And so they've built that into their process, that it changes. Ha, ha, have others found that? Is that a common kind of yes, some nodding, some hands up at the back? Yes. So, you know, because we lose so much in, um, in using um, technology and when we, we lose those visual cues, making that initial connection is really important. And it's one I would argue that um, once you've had an opportunity to connect face to face, it gives you a lot more leeway to be understanding about the things you might be missing when you don't have it, yeah? Thank you, Sharon, great. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Lovely. Is anyone else doing that? Few? Yeah. That's so, so what they're doing for the recordings benefit is that um, Louise um, at company have started doing or have been doing for some time a newsletter because what they're finding is that when people are communicating, they kind of know what's going on, they've been involved in that, but it's all the stuff they don't know that's going on that gets really frustrating. And so collating that and putting it into a newsletter in a sort of out-of-band, I guess, non-synchronous means of communication gives everybody a chance to get up to speed. Lovely. Thanks, Louise. All right, let's have one more. Yes. 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 Reformulating was the word you used. Absolutely. And, and it comes into my... Oh, it's gone to sleep again, damn it. Um, I'll continue on. It's um, the, the, the important part about listening, in my view, is clarifying that you have understood the message someone is trying to give you and then giving them a sense of feedback and reassurance that they've been understood and reformulating that back in a way, which is not just repeating exactly what they said, but showing that you've internalised it and understood it is, is really important part of it. That's fantastic, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna have to wake that up again in a minute, but I'm gonna let you have another think um, about what may, talked about how we communicate and we've talked about technology and some of the challenges of being in person and present and having teams who are remote. But what are the things that set someone apart? So if you think of a great communicator, what are some of the behaviours or traits that you think? I'm going to let you have a little chat while I get my computer back on, back on the stage. Um, have another little chat. Maybe you've got some examples. Maybe you can think of great communicators. Maybe they are people. Maybe they are colleagues. Or maybe it's just behaviour that you've, you've learned to recognise. Okay, so just have a quick chat while I beat my computer into submission.
Okay. What makes someone a great communicator? What do you think of with the words a great communicator? Do you think of Star Trek? <laughs> yeah. No. Seriously. What makes someone a great communicator? A storyteller. Yes, lovely. Yes. The possibility of listening. Listening to the person you're communicating with, yes. Being very selective, regardless of who you're talking to, with a colleague or a, or a client, you want to make sure that you're coming across as clearly as possible. That makes me think of another one, which is choosing the right language. Now, we're in Europe, so I'm sure that many of you are multilingual, so there's human languages, and are you speaking in a language that you share, or are you using a third language? But also professional language, jargon. We often get lack clarity when we get... Um, start using jargon. Lovely, thank you. Uh, back there and then with you, yeah. Uh, like asking questions when someone don't understand. Asking questions when you don't understand. Seeking clarity, seeking understanding. Again, I think that's part of that listening piece. Great, thank you. Yeah. Clarity in thoughts, brevity in expressions without uh, distorting your way of what you want to say. Mm -hmm. Checking for the feedback from the audience in terms of tenor and tone that you want to communicate, and consistency in the action to re-emphasize what you communicate normally results in an eloquent communicator. Beautiful. I think that's the TLDR for my whole talk. I love it. <laughs> so let me see if I can if I can do it justice. I might get it back in pieces. It's clarity, brevity without distorting what you're trying to say. I'm missing one, and consistency that you carry through on, By your actions. that your actions There's meet no what you're saying. What you're saying and what you're no contradiction between what you're saying and what you're doing are the signs of a great communicator. Thank you, Raj, lovely. Uh, there was one, yes. Respect. Respect. Huge, yeah. massive. Now I want to have Aretha Franklin come in, respect. We don't get good communication without respect. A talk I gave a couple of years ago was actually on constructive conflict resolution and respect and respecting your opponent is so critical. So yeah, even when you don't agree, respect makes such a difference. Yeah, thank you. And there was one, yes. That is beautiful. I'm not sure I can repeat that and give it, ju make, give it justice. Uh, a great communicator is someone who can um, leave their listener feeling respected and empowered, not diminished and degraded. Yeah, lovely, thank you. Let's see, I've got two more. I'm loving this, this is fabulous, yes. <laughs> Yes. Um, a great communicator makes sure they're prepared and organised, which gives the people who they're meeting with a sense of um, that their expectations will be met. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. It's a good one. Yes. Absolutely. Empathy. Like up there with respect. We don't have a song like R-E-S-P-E-C-T on empathy, but... And it, that, that's actually one of the ones which I think goes to the heart of why I think listening is the skill that we can all do to practice because really listening and taking the time to understand gives you the opportunity to develop empathy for what that person is saying and where they're coming from. Thanks, Greg. Really good. Yes. I would say some are, some 
are and perhaps but not with good intent? <laughs> Very great question. So the comment there was, I agree with all of this. How could I not? It's all sort of probably pretty self-evident. But um, would I say a politician was a great communicator? Yeah. Hands up. If you th Let's see what the audience thinks. Do you think politicians are great communicators? Summer, summer, there's lots of hands kind of doing the wavy thing. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? When I was uh, doing some of my background reading for this talk, I also went looking for great communicators. Um, and uh, I don't know, you, you may have picked up from my accent, I'm Australian. Um, our former Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, was not generally actually a great communicator in my view in terms of getting up and speaking, but she gave one cracker of a speech in Parliament called the misogyny speech. And she was diabolical. And the contrast with that talk where she was delivering with passion and like off the cuff, compared with some of the very formal, you know, communication that she would do to camera and press conferences and stuff. But that was really interesting. And another example was actually Michelle Obama. And her, when they go low, we go high speech. And that example was talking not about necessarily just, um, you know, a natural talent, but that she had practiced. But what was key about that particular speech was how tuned it was to the audience. It was not just about standing up and giving a flourish of oratory like perhaps her husband was used to doing, but she really connected with a lot of people in a, in a really sort of powerful way. I think that was kind of interesting. So this sense of what makes someone a great communi a communicator can vary. So Julia Gillard is a politician. Michelle Obama, not really a politician, but really a politician. Yeah, interesting. Thank you, great, great comment, yeah. Uh, I would like to add to that that uh, politicians, um, in the general So, if you're trying to explain our PMS to the general public, they probably think, ah, oh, he's a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is very interesting. I'm going to I'm gonna try and repeat that back. Part of the challenge that we have as Drupalists is, is, is common in, with was it politicians, that the thing we have to talk about is perhaps not something they necessarily want to listen to. You know, and it can come across as something they're not interested in and how do, how do we find the way to make it relevant to them, sort of? Okay, very good, thank you. And of course, my computer's gone to sleep again. You, I don't know if you noticed, I was playing with my power settings and it's, it's conspiring against me, and clearly. I need a communication kind of remediation with my computer later. We'll, we'll have a conversation. Um, so, what makes a great communicator? So, all of these things. Um, that ability to tune in to the audience, I think, is one of the real differentiators. Then I think there's just some basic skill technique stuff that people learn, um, and that comes back to the stuff around stagecraft. Little things like, I'm not kind of like, where, where you hold your microphone, how do you feel, or when I first, you know. So that's just technique, right? So there's some of that stuff that you can just learn and practice. Um, I've not been doing a very good job of this one today, but speaking more slowly, especially if you speak a different language to your audience, or you have a funny accent, as I do, to take the time to speak more slowly and clearly than perhaps you would if you were just having a conversation with somebody. Things like that. Another one which I've also been guilty of not doing properly for this one is never look at your slides if you're giving a talk. You should actually continue to look at your audience, and if you're really lucky, you might have a prompt, a foot, a foot video. But if you don't, this is what, I, what I've done. Not that it's really working for me today, but hey, that's a different story, right? So there's just some little things, and the other one is you'll notice I'm not here, right? Do you see, does that seem like a difference? Like if I was doing this whole talk from here, A, you know, I'm a little height challenged. 
versus here, where I can be much more engaged and directed with you. I'm not hiding behind something. There's not something between me and you. These are little things. These are things you can learn and lots of people can teach this stuff, right? But it's stuff I just didn't even think about because of my theatre background. I just sort of took it for granted. And someone said, no, there's something in that. Maybe it's something that we can remind people that, hey, we can learn this. As technologists, as Drupalists, you know, we, we don't necessarily think about using stuff like stagecraft, using your whole stage. And this one, this is the only point where I've actually, I'm in light. And I can feel that. That's something I learned in theatre. I can feel that there's light on me here, as opposed to over here in the dark. Here I be Gollum, precious. <laughs> Humour, silliness. This is another way to connect with your audience. You woke up, there were people who were like completely not paying attention. But now they're like, oh, what's going on? I missed something, because you laughed. Yeah? All right, so I talked about the what, and I've talked a bit about the how. The bit about the how I haven't spoken much about is the channels. You know, when I say we've got, you know, five generations in the workplace, this vast array of preference of how people like to talk, like moving from phone to video, like preferring to meet in person, like having a newsletter. Um, all of these things are different channels and there's just more and more of them and there's going to be more and more of them. So it was Marshall, our friend Marshall McLuhan who said, the medium is the message and it's never been more true. The thing that you're communicating is intri intrinsically linked into the way you're communicating or the myth that you're using. Never forget that. Make the most of it. The thing you can communicate in a tweet versus the thing you could communicate in a presentation like this, there's a common thread, but you use different words. You have a different um, scope for, for using it. So the medium is the message. <coughs> And excuse me while I just step behind the curtain again and have another conversation with my computer. While I do that, I want you to think about that how. So we've talked about stuff like listening, verbal, non-verbal, um, body language, the channels and all that sort of stuff. Can you perhaps, I mean, in your little chats, think about where that's come together for you in a really powerful and interesting way, where the medium and the message were beautifully aligned, yeah? while I go off and have a little moment talk with my machine.
Okay, let's, uh, let's bring this home. So let's have a cu couple of examples, because I'm also conscious that we're in the lunch one time slot, and there's a lunch two time slot, and if I let you go early, you might you know, get a head start, so I'm keeping that in mind. So I just want to come back to this. Any ideas where the how, the, me the, the, the how we do it, the medium, come together in interesting ways, in really well-aligned examples. I want to find a couple. No one had any? When you're like, it's like the thing is always showing you like the indicator. <laughs> <laughs> when your wife is pregnant and she's only showing you the indicator, the medium and the message are beautifully aligned. <laughs> Very good, thank you. Nice one. That's visual, that's non-verbal. Yeah? Yes? The safety demonstration that air stewards give. Yes, what a great one. It's like... <laughs> the medium and the message are perfectly aligned. Yeah, nice one. I love this. Okay, yes. Sorry, asking. Asking for the word, so like, I want to say something, putting my hand up. Putting your hand up, yes, yeah. I haven't, that was a great one, I haven't thought about it. So the, the act of putting up your hand is, is a message. And the medium all in one, yeah, really nice. Okay, one more. I could do this all day, but we don't have time. Going, going. All right, so. Which brings me to the why. We talked about the what, very briefly, transmitting culture. The how, which is where we can practice and build our skills in all sorts of different ways, in all sorts of different, you know, perhaps becoming mime artists to improve our body language. Practicing speaking, writing, listening, all those things. But really, why? The why of communication. Why do we do it? What's the point of all of this sound and fury signifying nothing? So if you want to make a difference instead of making a point, make sure you have a call to action. Very communication-y buzz speak, right? CDA, right? You've got our CDA button, call to action. But I think this goes beyond that. I think that the ultimate point of all communication is to drive transformation of some kind. Perhaps you're absorbing content because you want to learn. So learning is the why. Perhaps you want to change the world. Perhaps you want to have a different conversation with yourself. So that action, what steps will you take because of the communication? And if you're thinking about your audience, when you're communicating to them, how do you want them to be transformed? What steps will they be now empowered to take that they couldn't before? What is that next step? Like, what is the why? Why are we absorbing all of this information? Why are we ignoring so much information? What is it that makes it communication? The dialogue, the transformation, the why? This is one I don't necessarily have an answer for, and there will be a different answer for every message. But there has to be a reason, there has to be some purpose, and I'd like to say there has to be some kind of impact and action that drives the need for that communication. Perhaps it's a simple thing like, I understand better now. It doesn't necessarily have to be earth shattering, but that why, really has to inform both the how and the what <coughs> to really get at the heart of your why. Make sure you have a call to action. So bringing it together, distilling it down of all of the communication skills there are, 
Listening to me is the most important one. The what is the listening. The how is daily practice. We get better at things when we practice them and do it with intention and say, I can improve on that. That we do it with others. We can help others get better by working with them. And they say you only really learn when you teach. So how do we encourage better listening? And what does that really mean? And I think some of the things that come up around clar seeking clarification, asking questions, building empathy, daily practice, to reach mastery, you just keep working on it. You don't settle on your plateau that, oh, I can talk good now and that'll do. Daily practice, listen. And ultimately, that why, to have more impact. If you really take the time to listen to your audience, rather than expect them just to listen to you, you're likely to have more impact because you'll tune your message. You'll use the medium, the channel, more effectively because you're being audience focused. We talk about user-centered design. I'm advocating for audience-centered communication. Any questions? Silence. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was very clear and no questions. <laughs>
the, you know, the action that comes out of it is going to make things better, then that's a, that's a real challenge. But I think one of the things, I don't think we covered it, is open-mindedness and how to encourage someone to take a step and unfurl those crossed arms. I think there's a key in there is like making sure that they understand what the purpose of that communication is. Perhaps they're closed because they're afraid. Perhaps making sure that it's a safer space for them to have that communication in might encourage it. There are so many reasons though why that, why that door is down. Finding, asking what would open the door might be a way forward. I nearly know this one. I'll come back to you to see if there's one more because you've had a few goes. Any other, vo any other questions? Yes. So I think this is similar to the doesn't want to communicate, but um, a sort of step even further away, which is they don't, they don't want to come along on the same journey, I guess, that, that they have an opposite view. I think that goes beyond communication to into conflict resolution, where you've basically got oppositional perspectives. And do you need to resolve it, or can those different perspectives still be part of the moving forward? So it's a... I think that one's a tricky one. I think that one's a tricky one. All right. Um, I'm conscious of time. I would love to have this conversation, um, not like this, but round tables and continuing on, because I think we could all go on for, for ages. Um, I will put the slides up. There's some references here of different bits and pieces that I kind of tapped into as I developed the talk. Um, most importantly, join us for the contribution sprints or encourage others to do so. Great, in, oh, that's happening on Friday. And finally, I, would, I really have an appeal to you. It's difficult to have a dialogue when there's a stage and an audience, but I would really love you to give me the other side of the dialogue. Let me hear from you as my audience and evaluate this session. I've uh, put the short, shorthand in there, 18829, node, we're Drupalists, right? We know what nodes are. <laughs> events.drupal.org slash node slash 18829. Got it? Say it with me, 18829. I want to get more evaluations for this session than I've ever had before. And they can be terrible, I don't care if they're bad, but I would just love to hear your feedback and your ongoing thoughts. What have you taken away? What are going to be your action steps going forward? Thank you. Now go get some lunch. Sorry? Oh, I just shut it down. But yeah, sure, why not? It's very frustrating. Thank you. Oh, sorry.
Right. Yeah, I want I want the selfie. This is my first today. Oh really? Yeah. First for today. Very yeah. good. Yeah, my first. Ready? Thank you very really. much. Thank really you. That. Thanks Thank for you. your comments too. No problem. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the great session. Thank you. Thank you. Kids, you should become physicians too. Thank you. And also when we keep like saying it, like if people don't want to communicate, or sometimes happens that they, they don't have what it is, so then it's really to respect them and like go away. That's so Absolutely. Part of the thing. Absolutely. So it's also people like trying to do communicate, but if people don't want to let them go, it's quite like Yeah, hurt. it's all in the, if you love something, set it free as well. It's like, no, I have to respect that. You've got nothing to, nothing to say or add at this point, or the reasons that you don't want to communicate are private, then absolutely, very much agree, very much agree. Okay. We call this like the central stop and no one should be forced to communicate with someone who don't want to. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. And give me a minute to just get packed up and I'll, I'll come and chat when I'm, uh, when I'm done. Very badly behaved this afternoon as well. So I think, well, I suppose very much appreciate the rough on. It's okay to give up on it because it's just been bad.